On September 7th, Tesla released a blog post talking about the fact that the Model Y is the highest scoring car in the new Euro NCAP standards. And interestingly enough, that ties directly into something that I wanted to talk about anyway. So let's take a look at both of these matters. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I'm going to start with the Tesla blog. This is Model Y earns five-star safety rating from Euro NCAP. And apparently this is a new scoring protocol and so it's more stringent than the old ones were. So interesting stuff. Anyway, I wanna start with this first sentence cause it ties directly into what I wanted to talk about before this blog post came out. So talk about timing, it's very nice sometimes when things work out like that. Anyway, at Tesla vehicle design is an iterative process through which we aim to make some of the safest cars on the road even safer safer. And the important word here is iterative process or two words, I guess. Anyway, today Model Y is our latest vehicle to earn a five-star safety rating from the European New Car Assessment Program or Euro NCAP. As part of this assessment, Model Y received the highest overall score among any vehicle tested under Euro NCAP's newest, most stringent test protocol. This was based on an evaluation of Model Y's ability to protect adults, children, and vulnerable road users like cyclists and pedestrians, as well as its safety assistant features. And then they have this lovely, wonderfully unhelpful graphic because it's so, so tiny. But the important part here is that the Tesla Model Y is this blue line at the far left, which is the best score. So you can see that their overall score was 92%. The next best car was the Lexus NX. And then it goes all the way down, sadly enough, to the Renault Zoe, which is another electric vehicle, but it did not score particularly well in terms of safety and stuff. So you've got EVs on both ends of the spectrum. The Renault Zoe which costs way, way less than the Tesla, is also the least safe car tested. But anyway, you can definitely see Tesla comes out on top by three percentage points, in fact. I looked for other Teslas in here, and again, this is really, really tiny, so I might have missed it, but I did not see the Model X, the Model S, or the Model 3, and maybe that's because they're not manufactured in Europe. I don't know. I don't think a lot of these cars are manufactured in Europe, so I'm not exactly sure what the criteria was for what would be included. But anyway, the Tesla Model Y appears to be at least from what I can see here, trying to use my glasses. And look at this, I believe it's the only one listed in this list. So there's no other Teslas involved in this particular scoring round. So breaking this down a little bit, Model Y also achieved an outstanding score of 97% in the adult occupant protection category. Once again, the highest of any vehicle tested in this protocol. This category score is determined by a series of frontal side and rear whiplash tests, in addition to an analysis of several other safety safety attributes such as rescue, extrication, and post-crash safety. So this would be adults, not children in the vehicle, but basically the Tesla scored 97% out of 100 in this. So that's really great if you're an adult in the car, you are going to be about as safe as you possibly could be. And I actually did a video recently, and you can check it out if you're interested, where a woman discussed being in a very bad accident with her son and how they spun around several times instead of flipping, hit a light pole, and the light pole hit the roof of their Model 3 in this case, not their Model Y. But anyway, everyone survived and was perfectly fine. So these cars not only anecdotally are safe, but they're also super safe statistically. We then get to talk about continuous safety improvements. Euro NCAP used new Model Y vehicles featuring our latest manufacturing techniques and safety features to complete their assessment. First, of course, is the rear underbody casting, which actually I have in my 2021 Model Y as well. They don't talk about the front castings, but specifically for the rear casting, the rear underbody casting combined with our our fortified battery pack provides immense crash strength to the safety cell, helping to maintain compartment integrity. This strength allows our advanced restraint system to deploy effectively inside the cabin, holding occupants in place and providing protection against cabin intrusions. These next two points are things that I actually did not know about. The first one is far side airbag, which provides additional protection during side impacts, especially when there are two front occupants. This airbag deploys between the front seats to help prevent head injury that could be caused by occupant to occupant contact. So that's actually super, super cool. So basically if you're sitting, you know, you have two passengers in the vehicle and somebody hits you from the side, there's, I guess, an airbag in the head 
Pinterest or something. I'm not exactly sure where it is, but that deploys and it keeps people from knocking heads against each other. So that is really cool. Did not know about that. That makes me feel even better about the cars that we're driving in. Again, my 2021 model might not, might not have that, but certainly the latest ones do. So that's actually really cool extra protection. Then we get to multi-collision braking, which would probably be something where, you know, you're sitting still, somebody hits you from behind and then you get projected into a car in front of you. Anyway, for this type of collision, the Model Y automatically applies the vehicle braking system after a collision to help prevent a secondary impact. That is really cool. I did not, again, know about this. This is the kind of thing where, again, you know, somebody hits you and you're not responsible if you get rear-ended, but if your car hits the next person in line, you are responsible for that accident. Plus the fact, besides just, you know, who's responsible for it, there of course is the issue of health and safety and everything. You don't want your car going out of control and hitting another person. Or even worse than that, if a cyclist or pedestrian or someone is in front of you, that would be, you know, terrible because that person could be injured very badly. So this is really cool that under a multi-collision scenario, the car itself will break to try to avoid that second collision. And this is actually a nuance on the driver monitoring system that I did not know about either. I did know, of course, that it has a driver monitoring system. So, you know, if you're looking at your phone while you're driving or if you fall asleep or you're looking out the window or something, it will warn you and say, pay attention to the road. But beyond that, the direct monitoring system will detect a distracted driver and automatically adjust the sensitivity of the forward collision warning system to be more reactive. So if you do something like look down at your phone and you're like this and the car's driving, and it's getting close to somebody, it will actually increase the distance at which it will give a forward collision warning. So that would hopefully wake the person up. You know, if you're like this and it's like beep, 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 and you look up and you'll hopefully break in time. So as opposed to just being dumb and just continuing on, if the person's looking down or distracted or falls asleep or whatever it is, it will become more sensitive to the world around it and will signal an alarm earlier than it would otherwise. So all of these improvements are just remarkable improvements and they actually kind of go along with Ashok Eluswamy's talk about the car in the future very, very soon actively avoiding collisions by actually moving around and trying to avoid a collision. And also what Elon Musk talked about in the very near future, that airbags and other systems would be deployed based on Tesla vision. So if it saw an accident coming up, instead of waiting for the car to actually make contact and beginning to crumple, that it would actually see what was going to happen and be able to deploy things more slowly, leisurely, right? A second or two as opposed to milliseconds, but it would be able to deploy these things and enable the person to be safer because you could deploy the airbags much more slowly than just that kind of explosive boom that has to come out if you have a longer period of warning before the collision happens. So all of this stuff is amazing. So we've got the Euro NCAP scores, which are current, but Tesla's got other things in development right now that will make these cars even safer. And the really cool part is most of this stuff is software based. So we'll just all automatically get it over the air as it's approved. And finally, there's a score for Tesla Vision. This is really cool because a lot of people say that Tesla Vision is not that safe or everything, but here we go. Tesla Model Y got a 98% safety assist score. And as they say, Model Y also received a leading score of 98% in Euro NCAP safety assist category. This result was achieved with Model Y vehicles equipped with Tesla Vision, our camera vision and neural network processing system that now comes standard in all Tesla vehicles delivered in North America and Europe. This score was a result that many did not believe was possible without using radar. So specifically, this doesn't use radar. This is vision only, and it's the safest safety assistance system on the market right now. That is utterly amazing. And then Tesla talks about their automatic emergency braking system. That's the sort of thing where if you try to brake too hard, the car will actually like rotate the wheels a little bit, that kind of thump, 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 thump. If you try to brake too hard, that's the automatic emergency braking system. But anyway, they're talking about major improvements of that as well. And specifically, they say here about turning across path scenarios. So I believe that that would actually be if the car was rotating as opposed to just driving straight, if it was actually making a turn. I think that's what they're talking about. So the AEB system would engage then. And then super, super cool is in reverse. So what if you started to reverse really, really quickly? I don't know why, but maybe you hit the accelerator pedal by accident and started going really fast and there was a person right behind you. Not only the braking system would engage, but also the AEB system would engage. So it would try to slow it down 
down as efficiently as possible. So that's all super, super important and really cool. Not gonna be used in a ton of scenarios, but when it's necessary, it's going to be really, really important. And this isn't a direct safety thing, but it's actually definitely second order safety. Anyway, that's lane support systems, which basically means as the car starts to drift out of its lane, the vehicle will actually recorrect and put you back into the lane and or signal some sort of warning. And the Euro NCAP says that accidental road departures are one of the main causes of single vehicle and frontal crashes. So this as well is a big deal. And if that wasn't enough, the Australian NCAP program also announced that the Model Y had a five-star safety rating today as well. So all of this stuff is pretty amazing. So that's Tesla's blog about safety. What does this have to do with the other topic I was going to talk about today anyway? It has to do with cost of change and pace of change. Tesla is able to reduce the cost of change to be so minuscule that you can make changes constantly. And I don't just mean in software, although a lot of the stuff that they're talking about here is software advances. I also mean in terms of hardware. And I've discussed this before, especially in the interview that I did with Joe Justice, which is linked up here, which is all about digital self-management, which basically means that the Tesla factories have an AI feedback system that's there. Instead of requiring a human manager to come look at something, you've got an AI system that's able to do it instantly. And basically you can look up at a screen or look on your phone or something like that and see if what you're doing is a good idea or a bad idea instantly. And then just as importantly, there's a digital double of every single car. So every car as it's manufactured has a store of data that tells it about that vehicle so that as the vehicle is created, you've also got this digital twin that's also created. And that thing keeps track of what's going on in the car and any changes that are made. And then the third aspect about reducing cost of change is to do automatic self-testing. This is probably honestly the biggest thing in terms of reducing the cost of change for an automobile. And what that means is that before every single car goes out, it automatically self-tests itself. There's a thing called factory mode where the car gets put together, it runs a bunch of self-diagnostics and it says, yeah, I'm doing great or I've got problems in this area or this area or this area. And so humans can fix it before it goes out the door. Now, a regular automobile manufacturer might test every thousand vehicles, so they might pull one of every thousand off the line and they might mess around with it and look at it and test it and tear it apart to make sure it's good. But that means for a traditional auto manufacturer, the cost of change is drastically higher than for Tesla. Tesla, the cost of change to something is you try it and then the car self tests. And if it says, no, that was a bad idea, you pull that part out, put another one back in again that you know works and it can go on. Legacy Auto just cannot do this because they're not testing every single vehicle that comes off the line. And the result of that is that the cost of change for any vehicle is very high. So what you do is you only make a major revision to every automobile model every five years or so, and then minor revision somewhere around two and two and a half years. So Tesla, as opposed to that, is able to make revisions to their vehicles literally every single day. So the car that I purchased in December of 2020 is different than the car that was manufactured in January of 2021, is different than the one that was made in February of 2021, and on and on and on. So pretty much every day these vehicles are different and even in the same day people will definitely get different things on their vehicles and the way that Tesla is able to do this and keep the cost down is number one they've got the digital self-management so people can see if what they're doing looks like it's a good idea number two they have this digital twin so it keeps track of what specifically is in this car not just sort of statistically what's in all model Y's, but what's in your model Y with that VIN and then third and most importantly is the self-testing. Since every single car is self-tested, you can make changes to every single car because you know if that particular car is safe or not. It's not like statistically, I think these cars are safe and I hope they are, but I only take one out of every thousand off the line to look at it. It's like, I know absolutely that this car is safe because that car was tested. And of course, also regulatory bodies like NHTSA and Europe and China and everywhere else, they are able to actually look at this data as well. And they can actually see like a printout if they want to of that particular Tesla model safety features. And so that gives them the data that they need. It makes the approval process much, much faster for Teslas. They're able to go like, oh yeah, that looks great. It's already tested itself and it's fantastic. And if for example, NHTSA wanted another test to be done on the vehicles in order to approve them, Tesla could just implement that test. And then every single car that rolls off the line in the future has that new test. And so they can prove that every 
every single vehicle is safe, not just every 1,000 that they pull off the line. And then finally, we get to the real genius of this whole thing, and that is that because Tesla is able to do over-the-air software updates, the cost of change to your car after you buy it is very, very, very low. So if you think about a car like we have our Mazda, we purchased it in 2018, and now it's a four-year-old car and it feels kind of stale when I drive it and it feels old, of course, anything does compared to a Tesla. But I'm saying if you went to the Mazda dealership today and you purchased a 2022 Mazda CX-5, it would have a bunch of refreshes and new software added to it and things like that, that the old one wouldn't, even though underneath it's probably pretty much the exact same thing. The new car will have upgrades that the old car never will have. And that's just not true with a Tesla. Anything that can be upgraded through software can just be upgraded for all the vehicles. And so my own vehicle, the one that I purchased almost two years ago, has so many new features, including full self-driving beta, which is awesome. It just makes the car so cool. And it's like getting a new car every time there's like a little upgrade or something. It's like a little new present and the car feels refreshed and you don't feel like, oh man, this car is like two or three years old. I wish I got a new model. Why? It's like, no, I get most of the benefits of all of these things after I purchased it because the cost of software change is almost zero for Tesla. And that is amazing. And that also means that in terms of safety, to circle back to the things we were talking about at the beginning, Tesla's able to go like, oh man, you know, this could be improved. We could actually make the airbags deploy better. We could do better automatic emergency braking systems. We can actually implement Tesla Vision on a car that was not designed for that originally. We can do all of these things to make these vehicles safer after you buy the car. And nobody else is doing that. So not only is cost of change critical to making Tesla profitable and to be able to make their vehicles as quickly and as low cost as possible. It's also critical to the user experience. We get cool and better things with our Tesla over time and the cars become safer than when we first purchased them. And that is pretty amazing stuff. Tesla definitely deserves all the kudos for their ratings and for winning Euro NCAP overall score. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and interesting and thought-provoking. If you did, please do like the video so other people can find it, and of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. I think I'll actually see a few of you in San Diego at the Fully Charged Live event that starts on Saturday. And of course, if you want to join the team, just check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have TeslaBot t t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells, all of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget, we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.